one would like to admit that there is a city underground. There always seems to be a left brain, right brain thing going on in our approach to important social issues. Poverty is a good example. On one hand, we use numbers like the National Poverty Index to tell us that there is a problem. Then we think up a solution and summon our passion to change those numbers. In 2006, Mayor Bloomberg decided to take a bold approach to the issue of poverty here in New York City. He appointed a commission led by Dick Parsons and Jeff Canada. The mayor said, uh, you know, I have a small task for you, Jeff. I said, great, Mr. Mayor, I'll do whatever you want. Uh, he says, I'd like you and Dick Parsons to figure out how to end poverty in New York City. Here in South City, life is hard. It's cities that are really making changes in the world that we live in, day in and day out, families, education, crime. Uh, we've gone after these other problems, so it really makes some sense to uh, try to do something and go after the problem of poverty. At that point, there really wasn't a very loud conversation at all in the country, quite frankly, around poverty. And he, um, quite boldly, agreed that we should uh, bring a group of experts together and take a hard look and a fresh look at poverty and how poverty is experienced. The problem, of course, is that we seldom enlist our analytical brain to measure the effectiveness of our creativity and passion. Uh, in government, we keep programs that aren't working going. We always think throwing more money at them is the solution, and that's just not true. He's fond of saying for all the money that we spend and all the good work that we do, um, we often don't know what really works. Uh, the biggest obstacle to really dealing with uh, issues that uh, create poverty in this country is that we have just not follow the science. Uh, we've taken some guesses, uh, we've uh, decided this sounded like a good idea, but really getting an idea, testing it out, uh, being, uh, I think, diligent enough to say, this doesn't work. That has all changed in New York City, where the mayor created the Center for Economic Opportunity, or CEO, to analyze the causes, scope, and consequences of poverty. The Parsons Canada Commission recommended to the mayor that the City of New York pilot program and evaluate each and every one, and based on that, decide how to scale those programs. What the mayor wanted to do was to put it into an innovation fund where we kept much closer track of how the investments were implemented and what kind of re, um, responses came in. Uh, the way this would work is to find the best partners uh, in New York City to help us with these ideas. Uh, that the idea wasn't to create another city bureaucracy. Yes, I'm lucky to be alive. Here in South City, life is hard. Union Settlement has been providing services to residents here in East Harlem for over 100 years, and in particular, a partner in our young adult literacy program. I've been taking care of myself since my father died. He died in my house, and ever since that, when he passed away, all my rest of my years, it was just went downhill. The great thing about um, this range of initiatives is it gave us a chance to try many different things and have those um, special discoveries where a solution that wasn't envisioned for a population wound up being successful for that population. As you know, we started the program here without our internship components yes. and our evaluation results when we did the cohorts here with the internship, with the paid internships with young yes. people, yes. and without at some of the other sites, your program was so much more successful. So That's now great. we've attached <laughs> that internship to That's everybody's great. programs, which is really great. And now we're building on that model through the Social Innovation Fund and we're replicating your program at three other sites in New York City and at two wow. other cities throughout the country. Wow, that's fantastic. I kicked out of high school for being like insubordinate, but ever since I came here, I've been working on my GED, math. I want a career in cooking, so I did most of the internships here as well. Like. So here, you know, the program model was terrific, but adding that paid internship component yes. really made it the success that it's turned out to be. I did practically every internship here. I'm really, really glad that we, you know, we here can have this program and have this incentive piece. Our guys are really benefiting from just the idea that I don't have to just come here for academics. It's like you get $50 a week, but instead of doing $50 a week, it's like you boost your, your resume up. Because on my resume, I have cooking, security, 
staff management. You know, so the incentives do a little bit more than just be a carrot. It actually says there's something more for you if you keep going forward. You oh, know? And I'm so glad we have this component. I want to go to college for cooking. Ever since I was six years old, my art, I cook. That's so all I want to do is cook, have my own restaurant by the time I'm 21. They say we fallen through the cracks. Every new solution is results driven. It works or it doesn't. If it doesn't, it is gone. If it does, they find out why and replicate the solution across the city and now throughout the nation. A Settlement House is a community-based organization which has a long history in this country. Eastside House, for example, was established in 1891. Its essential purpose is to help poor people enter the economic uh, mainstream. Inside uh, Eastside House, there is a program focusing on young people ages 17 to 24 who've dropped out of school and don't work. So what we have here is a math class. Um, this is for students who came in this program at the fifth grade level, and our goal is to get them up to the high school level so they can take the GED examination. And in the past three years, we've enabled 163 of those students to get their GED. Many of these students started with uh, reading grades as low as uh, fifth grade, get their GED, and be accepted to either two or four year colleges. A strengths-based approach where we focus on the strengths that students may come with. We work on their deficiencies. We also reward success. Our approach is to focus on those strengths that people have and not focus on the labels that people have. High school dropout, ex-convict, all of the labels that have negative connotations and connote that people don't have strengths, that they don't come to the table with skill sets that can be exploited if they get the proper supports. They succeed, we reward that success. So in some areas we might provide internships for students so that money may not be such a focus for them at the point. In some other areas we pay for them to get the applications to go to college. Over the past three years, we've had 163 students in this program uh, graduate from the program with a GED and be accepted to college. So, for example, our GED pass rate over the last two years improved rapidly. We were at 54% um, two years ago. We rose to 66% last year. This year, we were at 83% pass rate. CEO's bold breakthrough and the reason they won the Innovations in American Government Award from Harvard's Ash Center is that they never stopped analyzing the data. Five years ago, the CUNY Chancellor looked at graduation rates at our community colleges and realized they were unacceptably low, which is a national problem. We decided to try something different and created the ASAP program. Key to CEO is that you have to uh, look on a regular basis to see whether or not you're getting the results that you hoped for and that you predicted. The national six-year graduation rate is around 20 percent, and for a similar group of students who met all the same criteria as our ASAP students, it was 24 percent in three years. So for similar students, three years later, about 24 percent graduated in three years. The target that our chancellor set was that we would graduate 50 percent of students three years after they entered the ASAP program. For ASAP, we hit a 55% graduation rate, five percentage points above our goal after three years. I think there's two things. One, it's a place to develop some really innovative programs to attack poverty and help poor, particularly the working poor. And number two, it's a place to find out what works and what doesn't work. With all of the CEO's efforts, we've actually created a culture of data and evaluation that now really lives in the agencies. One of the greatest strengths of ASAP, something that we're incredibly grateful for, is that the CEO really held us to, to very strict evaluation measures. They didn't just say, okay, here's the money, let's see how you do three years later. They held us to the, to the goals we set for ourselves, and, and we welcomed that. It was an incredible partnership with them saying, we want to see you succeed, and them helping us measure our success. I was on my own at 17, so survival took priority. It was more about me actually uh, working, paying the bills, living on my own, and taking care of myself. So I was like, this dream of school actually was put on hold. One way of improving poverty um, and economic prospects is, of course, educational attainment. For every associate's degree that a person has, over a lifetime brings an average of $10,000 per year on top of whatever income they would have had. 
But I realized after four years of just working and working, um, you know, these mediocre jobs, you know, retail, uh, restaurants, uh, customer service, I wasn't getting anywhere more than $10 an hour. So the ASAP program was presented to the Center for Economic Opportunity as a way of improving degree attainment rates of our community college students, who are the poorest students at the City University of New York. So I just took a, you know, I applied and you know, I put all my effort into it, applying by myself, did the financial aid by myself, and I wound up getting into BMCC and getting full financial aid. College still has its burdens where textbooks are very costly and so is a metro card transporting yourself and um, other things of that nature. So that was a little bit um, where I was worried because I was like, college seems like it's for me, but all these expenses I have to survive, so how am I going to pay for all these things? So that's what I was worried about. If an ASAP student receives financial aid and they have any gap in their, their aid and their tuition and fees, the program waives that balance. Um, second, we provide unlimited monthly Metro cards so the students can get between work, home, and school without any fear. And then finally, we provide uh, free use of textbooks for all students. So I, all I had to do was focus and go to class. I had my textbooks, I had my Metro cards, I had a personal academic advisor who was there to see through to the end that I made sure I graduated, made sure I was on task. And to know that I started off being a 2.7 GPA high school student who didn't even get their diploma, to somebody who transferred to NYU on nearly a full scholarship, that just, I, I, if you said this was gonna be me two years ago, I would have never believed you. And I am here and I, there's no turning back for me. I'm just reaching for the stars. Yes, I'm lucky to be alive. Here in South City, life is hard We can't receive